I learned to be a feminist from being black. I learned to be a feminist from being denied my rights as an African American. I'm a third generation Washingtonian born in a city where residents had no vote in Congress, no vote for president of the United States, paid federal taxes, and had segregation in all of its facilities and schools mandated by the Congress of the United States. That didn't uh, sit well with my parents. By the time I got to Yale Law School, I knew exactly what I wanted to do and why. Remember, there was no civil rights movement. So if you wanted to do something that helped move black people out of, out of their uh, virtual apartheid state, being a lawyer seemed to make good sense. Black women were initially perplexed about how they should respond to the women's movement. Its first face was a white face. That meant white privilege. How are we to respond? Well, some of us <laughs> were, felt pretty clearly how you respond, that you could be both female and black at the same time. And if you didn't think you could, you are. You need to come to grips with that. I literally had to go around to women's organizations. And I said, why is it that only blacks file complaints before my commission? I remember that I was so frustrated that I had the first comprehensive hearing on women's rights. It was a part of consciousness raising so that women would in fact do something when they found themselves in the workforce uh, treated unequally. When President Carter appointed me to chair the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, the problem uh, really stemmed from certain kinds of complaints. What complaints we saw were horrendous. Sometimes I wouldn't call them sexual harassment. I would call them sexual assault. And we issued the first sexual harassment guidelines. They were later affirmed by the Supreme Court. Then women be began to come forward. The women in Congress met on the floor, and we decided that some of us had better get over to the Senate, or this was going to be a done deal. I do not believe that Professor Anita Hill should be left to stand alone without uh, being heard. We knocked on the door of the Senate. We were not let in, but television cameras had followed us, and they knew they had to do something. There is no motivation that would show that I would make up something like this. There's no question that Anita Hill will inspire others to come forward. But Anita Hill did something uh, even larger for women. There developed the Year of the Woman, and that's when we got the first African-American woman in the Senate and a group of women far larger than usual elected to the House. Every new group has a moment which is legitimately called a revolution. Once that burst, in fact, breaks through, that revolutionary moment may be gone, but the notions the movement, the energy continues.